Hey guys and welcome back to Blackthorn Prods. In this video we're going to expand on our previous video and add some really cool features to our multiplayer chat system like being able to edit messages, react to messages by liking them and deleting messages. If this sounds cool then let's jump straight into it. If you haven't followed the previous tutorial go and check it out, it shows you step by step how to create the main multiplayer chat system that allows users to send and receive messages. Link will be in description if you want to check that video out. Otherwise, we will also have the links to the project files for the starting project as well as the final result project in description. So to add these cool features to our chat, we'll be using again a service called Stream that you can have access to completely for free and that allows us to create any chat system we can imagine in a fraction of the time they would usually take. Again, go and check the previous video which is linked in description they'll show you how to download Stream into your project. Stream is not usually a free service, but for us indie game developers, they propose a completely free maker account. So click the link in the description so you can get started using Stream, and now let's get started. So on my message prefab, we've went ahead and added these three buttons. So there's this red cross button for deleting the message, the second button is for editing our message, and the third and last button is for liking our message. We've also added this input field which is deactivated at the moment which we'll be activating and using when we click on the edit message button. And finally we have this reaction object that is also deactivated at the moment that will just show how many likes this message has. Let's start with deleting messages. So I'll double click on my message c -sharp script to open it up inside of my text editor. So in order to add these different features each message is going to need to store their message ID as well as the user ID of the user that sent the message. These IDs get automatically generated by stream, but we just need to store them in variables on our message scripts. So I'll make two public string variables, one called message ID and the other called user ID. Now we don't really need these variables to appear inside of the inspector, so I'll just add hide inspector in front of both of them. Now let's open up our stream chat behavior c -sharp scripts, Let's come to the onMessageReceived function, which is the function that gets automatically called by stream once we receive a message, and it's in this function that we are actually instantiating our message object. Now once it has been instantiated, we will set our two ID variables. So I'll say new message spawns.message ID equals new message dot message dot ID. And then underneath this line I'll type new message spawns dot user ID equals new message dot user dot ID. Okay, and just like that, we're storing our message ID and our user ID on our message scripts. Let's go back to that script. Let's now make a public game object variable called delete button, which will store our delete button. Inside of the start function, so when our message just gets instantiated, we need to check if we are the owner of this message. So if we sent this message, we need to do this because we only want to be able to delete a message if we are the one that sent it. So I'll check if stream chat behavior dot instance dot client dot user ID is not equal to user ID. So if our stream client user ID is not equal to the user ID of this message, then we shouldn't be able to delete this message. So I'll say delete button dot set active false. Alright, so let's now make a public void function called onclick delete button. This is the function that will get called when we click on our delete button. Instead of here, we'll just call a function on our stream chat behavior scripts called delete message. And we'll pass in as a parameter our message ID variable so we know what message we want to delete. Then we'll also want to deactivate our delete button since there is no point to delete a message that's already been deleted. Okay, let's now go back to our stream chat behavior script to create this delete message function. So in here, I'll make a public void function called delete message. They'll take in as a parameter a string for the message ID. In this function, we just need to call clients.messageapi.delete message async, and we'll pass in two parameters. The first one is the message ID of the message that we want to delete. So I'll just pass in our message ID parameter. And the second is a bool for if we want to hard delete or soft delete the message. I'll put false, which is for soft deleting, but stream supports both. Hard deleting means that you actually want to completely remove the message from the game, whereas soft deleting means that our message will still be in our game, but the text will just be replaced with message deleted. Now since this is an async function, we'll add .log if failed to capture any errors if something goes wrong. 
Okay, now that our message has been deleted, we actually need to change the text of that message to message deleted. So I'll come back up to our get or create client function. This is the place where we are subscribing to different events like message received. We'll now subscribe to a new event for when we delete a message. So I'll type client.messageDeleted plus equals on message deleted. This way, the on message deleted function will get automatically called by stream when a message has been deleted. Let's now make this function. So void on message deleted, and it needs to take in as a parameter a event message deleted called deleted message. So the message that has just been deleted will be stored in the message deleted parameter. Now this param will give us access to the message ID of the message that's been deleted, but we need to have access to the actual message gay object in our game so that we can modify its text to delete a message. So we need a way to get access to a particular message gay object given a certain message ID. So we're going to come up to the top of our script and I'm going to make a dictionary of type string and message called IDs and messages, and it will be equal to a new dictionary of strings and messages. So now let's come back to the on message received function. At the bottom, I'll add a new element to our IDs and messages dictionary. The element will have an ID being new message dot message dot ID, and the message key object will be our new message spawn variable. Thanks to this, we now have a system that will allow us to fetch a message key object given its message ID. So back to our on message deleted function, I'll create a message variable called m. For short, they'll be equal to our IDs and messages dictionary with the key being deleted message dot message dot ID. So we have now stored in this message variable the actual message key object that has been deleted. Now I can set the deleted message dot message dot text to be equal to the string deleted message. And then underneath this line, I'll set m dot message text dot text to be equal to deleted message dot message dot text. And there we go, this should work perfectly. So let's make sure our scripts are nicely saved and let's go back to Unity. Eh? In here, let's first of all double click on our message prefab and we will drag and drop the delete button into its respective slots. Now let's select the delete button and we need to add to it a on click event. I'll drag and drop the message object into the slots and we can now find the message scripts and inside of it find the on click delete button function. Okay, pressing play, let's send a message saying hey and now if we click on this red cross, the message now says message deleted. Great job. Let's now tackle updating messages. So let's jump back inside of our message scripts. I'll start off by creating three variables. The first one will be a public game object variable that will store our update button. The second will be a public TMP input field variable for the update input field. And lastly, we'll make a bool variable called update field open. They'll just keep track if the update input field is currently open or not. First of all, just like for the delete button, we'll want to deactivate it if we are not the owner of this message. We'll also want to deactivate it once we delete our message, since we don't want to be able to edit a message that has been deleted. Now let's make a public void function called onClickUpdateButton. This is the function that we will call once we click on our update button. So likewise, when we click on the update button, we're going to want to hide the delete button as well as the update button. We also need to enable the update input field, so I'll say update input field dot set active true. It would be nice to have the update input field to be filled in automatically with the previous message content, so I'll set update input field dot text to be equal to message text dot text. Finally, since the update field is now open, we'll set our update field open bool variable to true. Now let's create the update function. In here, we'll first of all check if our update input field is open. If this is the case, then we want to check if we have hit the enter key on our keyboards. So I'll say if input.getKeyDown keycode.return. This is where we're going to want to call a function on our stream chat behavior script called update message. And we'll pass in our message ID so that we know which message we want to update, as well as our update input field.txt so that we know what is the new updated message. So once we hit enter, we're going to want to hide our update input field. We will also reactivate the delete button as well as the update button. And finally, we will set our update field open bool to false since it is now closed. All right, let's save the script and head back to our stream chat behavior scripts. Let's now make the public void function called update message. They'll take in as a parameter a string for the message ID and another string for the updated message. Inside of this function, just copy this piece of code. So we're calling streams update message async function. 
The ID of the message that we are updating is our message ID pram and the text of the message we are updating is our updated message pram. Now let's come up to the get or create client function and let's add a new event called client dot message updated and we'll subscribe to that event by calling a function called on message updated. Let's now create this void on message updated function that will take in as a parameter a event message updated called updated message. Like last time, we're going to need to retrieve the message game object that we need to update based on the message ID thanks to our dictionary. So I'll say message m equals IDs and messages with the key being updated message dot message dot ID. Now we'll simply set m dot message text dot text to be equal to updated message dot message dot text. We will also add to it the string edited into parentheses so that our users know that this message has been edited. Okay, let's now save the script and head over back to Unity. I'll double click on my message prefab to open it up. We'll now drag and drop the update button and the update input field into the respective slots. Once that's been done, let's select our update button and we'll add a on-click event to it. I'll then drag and drop my message object into the slot and then select the message script and find our on-click update button function. Okay, let's now tackle adding and removing reactions to our messages. So in our case, that's likes. Back inside of the message script, we're going to make the variables that we need. Starting off with a public game object variable for the like button. We'll also need a public game object variable for the reaction object, which is the thumbs up object that will appear on our bubble when the message has at least one like. We'll now make a public TMP text variable for the number of likes text. And finally, we'll also make a bold variable called button likes that we will set to true by default. This bold variable will dictate if our like button will either like our message or unlike it if our user has already liked the message. By default, it is set to true since at the start, we want to like the message if we click on the button. So unlike the delete and update buttons that we only want to show if the message is owned by our user, the like button will be visible to all users. We only want to hide it once the message has been deleted. So I'll quickly go to our stream chat behavior script and I'll go inside of the on message deleted function. Underneath everything, we'll set m.likeButton.setActive false. All right, that takes care of that. Let's go back to our message scripts. I'm going to make a public void function called onClickLikeButton. This is the function that will get called automatically when we click on our like button. In here, we'll check if our bool button likes is equal to true. If that's the case, then we'll call a function on our stream chat behavior script called like message and we'll pass in our message ID. We'll then set button likes to false since the button should now unlike the message if we click on it again. Else, so if our button likes bool is false, then we'll call a function on our stream chat behavior script called unlike message. And again, we'll pass in the message ID. This time we'll set button likes to true since the button should now like the message if we click on it again. Let's hop inside of our stream chat behavior script to create these two functions. So I'll start off with the public void like message function that will take in as a parameter a string for the message ID. Inside of this function, just copy this piece of code. So we are just calling streams send reaction async function. We are then passing in our message ID param so that stream knows what message we are giving a reaction to. And then we're also setting the reaction type to like. You can name your reaction however you want. Let's now make the public void unlike message function that also takes in as a parameter a string for the message ID. Inside of this function, we'll just call client.messageAPI.deleteReactionAsync. We'll pass in as a param our message ID so that we know what message we are removing a reaction from. And we also need to pass in the type of reaction that we want to remove. So in my case, that's like. Okay, now let's come back to the top of the script inside of the get or create client function. We're going to subscribe to two events. The first one will be client.reactionRecieved and we will call the onReactionRecieved function. And the second will be client.reactionDeleted and we will call the onReactionDeleted function. Let's now make the void onReactionRecieved function that will take in as a parameter a event reaction new called new reaction. Like usual, we first of all need to retrieve our message game object that we are adding a reaction to thanks to our dictionary. So I'll make a message variable called m that will be equal to my IDs and messages dictionary with the key of new reaction dot message dot id. We'll then activate the reaction object. So I'll say m dot reaction object dot true. 
Now that the reaction object is activated, we need to update the number of likes text to the correct number of likes that this message has. So I'll say m.numberoflikes.text equals new reaction dot reaction dot reaction score with the key like. And we'll convert this to a string using the dot string function. So yeah, the reaction score is basically the number of like reactions that this message has. Now I'm going to copy this onReaction receive function and I'll paste it right underneath. I'll rename this one to all reaction deleted and this time it'll take in as a param a event reaction deleted called deleted reaction that will store the reaction that has just been deleted. Again, we'll need to retrieve the message object that we have deleted the reaction from. So we'll just replace new reaction with deleted reaction. Now we're going to make a if statement checking if deleted reaction dot message dot reaction scores contains key and instead of the parentheses, I'll put like equals equals false. So we are basically checking if our message has no more likes left now that we have removed the like. If this is the case, then we'll want to deactivate our reaction object. So I'll say m dot reaction object dot set active false. Else, so if we still have at least one like reaction left on our message, then we'll just update our number of likes text. So I can just use this line and replace the new reaction with deleted reaction. All right, we are all done. So let's make sure all of our scripts are nicely saved and let's head over back to Dante. I'll double click one last time on my message prefab. In here, I'll drag and drop the like button into its slot as well as the reaction object in his slots. Finally, let's drag and drop the number of likes text in his respective slots. Now I'll select the like button and I'll add the onclick event to it. I'll then drag and drop the message object, choose the message script, and then find the onclick like button function. Okay, so now you can build the game by pressing Ctrl B or Command B if you're on the Mac to simulate another player across the world. Then connect both players to the same room and have fun using your new chat system. We're now able to send and receive messages, update messages if we have made any mistake or delete them completely. And then we can also react to messages by adding or removing likes. This is really awesome. Okay, that marks the end of this tutorial on upgrading our chat system. Hit the like button if you learned something cool in this video, it means the world to us. And subscribe to the channel, we have loads of cool videos planned for the near future, so stay tuned for that. Until then, cheers!